Terry Bradshaw couldn't do it. John Elway couldn't do it. Troy Aikman couldn't do it. Tom Brady couldn't do it. All those quarterbacks I just mentioned won two in a row, and they couldn't get to three. It's really hard. This is the Lombardi line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. Now here is your host, Stormy Bonatoni, on v the sports betting network. We need to put your GM translator <laughs> to use once again today because this is the time of year, right, where we have all these players and coaches, whether they're on the podium or they're on podcasts talking about XYZ, trying to sift through what's the reality of what they're really saying. So let's start in Dallas with Dak Prescott. He obviously joined the Cowboys in 2016, yet Dallas has only had two playoff wins in that time. And as a franchise, they haven't made the NFC title game since 1995. It doesn't help his case that the Mavericks and Stars right now are crushing it in their respective conference finals and that the Texas Rangers are a defending World Series champion. Here's Dak on how he feels about the city of Dallas and their sports teams right now. It's not jealousy, but yeah, it fires you up. Uh, yeah, 100%. I think any competitor um, should, damn sure, in my position, leader of the team, um, understanding what win- winning means here, um, not getting it done, and then watching your brothers, you say, uh, your brothers across the city uh, going making things happen. I'm, I'm, nobody, I, want it, I want it for him. Trust me, I want it because it only... As I said, it only raises stakes and, and makes makes it tougher on me, and, and I'm for that. And so, go win it. Go win it. Rangers did it. Other two go do it. Put more pressure on us. Translation? Well, the translation is there's already pressure on us. He's admitted he's got pressure on him, right? So he said that puts more pressure on us. And he knows it. I mean, look, th- this is a franchise that has not been able to get over the hump. And frankly, it hasn't been able to get to the top of the hump. Forget about getting over the hump. It hasn't got to the top of the hump, you know, because they haven't really been that one game away from winning the conference championship. And we've seen teams, and we're going to talk about this in the next soundbite. I mean, the last 10 years, Stormy, let's put things in perspective. The Patriots from 14 to 19 were in, won three Super Bowls, were in another, and lost the conference championship game. The last five years, the Kansas City Chiefs have been in three, won three Super Bowls, been in four, and lost a conference championship game. So this has been a domination of two AFC teams, really. Now, we know Tampa won a Super Bowl. We get that, right? And Denver won one going back. But for the most part, this has been dominated, and of course the Rams, but this has been dominated by two teams, and they're not the Cowboys. And so this generation over the last 10 years really doesn't understand why the Cowboys are being talked about like they are, because from my generation, they were America's team. They were on TV all the time. Nobody sees that anymore. You know, no one sees this because they haven't been able to get over that hump or at least get to the top of the hump. And I'm also just laughing with the soundbite itself where Dak says, I'm not jealous, but then proceeds to curse like four times in 30 seconds. Like that to me shows <laughs> that you've, you're feeling some type you're of jealous. way. You're feeling some type of way, yeah. Dak. And we talked last week, too, about that graphic that showed up on ESPN that said season since last conference finals in Dallas. And you had Mav zero, star zero, Ranger zero, Dallas 28. It's been a really, really long time. So while it's been a St. Jude's play historically, Dallas is 7-1 to to win the NFC, third on the odds board, to be the NFC's representative in the Super Bowl. For the first 30 Super Bowls, Dallas played in that semifinal lead-up to the Super Bowl 16 times, zero since, and we're entering Super Bowl 59. Okay, you talked Kansas City Chiefs. Tom Brady, new analyst for Fox, was on the herd with Colin Cowherd yesterday where he was asked about the task that is upon the Kansas City Chiefs this year as they search for a three-peat. All these teams in the NFL are very competitive. They're all well coached. The margin of error is razor thin. So to win one Super Bowl is extremely difficult. To win two back-to-back what the Chiefs have done, I mean, as we know in the history of the sport, nearly impossible. To win three in a row, there's a reason why no one's done it. The reason why you haven't won three in a row, because it's hard to win one in a row. <laughs> so to put three of those together in back-to-back-to-back seasons – with drafting last, a very hard schedule, all the turnover and free agency, guys continuing to be motivated. It's a it's a big challenge. And and Michael, he also talked about that team that he was on that was perfect 
and didn't go on to win the Super Bowl. Said that was the best team yeah. that he had ever been a part of, best team he had ever seen, and they didn't win it all just to further show the challenge that it is to get to that point. Um, what else did you take away from Tom? Well, look, uh, you know, Bart Starr couldn't do it. Terry Bradshaw couldn't do it, right? John Elway couldn't do it. You know, Bob Greasy couldn't do it. Tom Brady couldn't do it. Troy Aikman couldn't do it. All those quarterbacks I just mentioned won two in a row, and they couldn't get to three. It's really hard. And when you go back and watch Buffalo-Kansas City game again, you realize how fortunate Kansas City was. Obviously, Bass misses the 44-yard kick. But there were some opportunities that Buffalo had, particularly in the red zone early in the game, that they didn't take advantage of. And so Tom's right. There's such a thin margin. And you find it hard that you can continue that margin moving forward because this chief team, when you take a step back, isn't quite the same team they were last year. Now, they modified what they did. They changed to a running game. Kelsey got healthier at the end of the year. But I still think it's going to be an uphill climb because everybody's coming at them. Look, I know they have the best player in the league, but Brady was the best player in the league at one time. Mm-hmm. Peyton Manning was the best player in the league one time. Bart Starr was. You know, Terry Bradshaw was. They couldn't do it. Yeah, can Patrick Mahomes do what those legends could not? Expectations high for Kansas City. Win total set at 11.5. They're a minus 225 favorite to win yet again in the AFC West. 3-1 to one to win the AFC and make the Super Bowl and a plus 550 favorite to win it all. The 49ers close behind at 6-1, to one, Ravens 9-1, to one, Lions and Bills 12-1. to one. And you mentioned that team from Buffalo and the way they played Kansas City in the postseason. Let's use your GM translator to translate a GM as Brandon Bean was on the Athletics Football Podcast talking about why they let go of Stefan Diggs. You know, a player of his caliber, you, you weigh a lot of things. You know, I don't need to go through all the reasons why we decided to go ahead and do that. I would say from a cap standpoint, we decided just to go ahead and eat it now and we can we think we can compete and do what we need to do by eating it now and then not walk into next year and go, all right, because if we didn't, if we if we tried to come up with some way and split it up too many different ways, then now it's just like that albatross that you're just hanging on your neck all year. You look at your cap and you're going, oh, man, look at how much money we still have dead. What did you take away from it? Well, I think it was enough was enough. They just got fed up with him. I mean, for them, he can talk all in circles he wants about taking the hit. Look, last year they, they basically had enough. You watch the beginning of the game, right? You watch the beginning of the Buffalo game. They throw a ball to him in the flat. They're trying to get him involved with the offense. He fumbles that play. They get a 10-yard penalty called because Knox kicks the ball out of bounds. The next play, they try to run a middle read with him. He drops that. Later in the game, he drops a deep ball. And when you watch the running game go, it was the other receivers doing the blocking more than he was. There was a discontent here. Nobody wants to talk about it, but there was. He had run his course in Buffalo. And like I've often said and wrote about in Football Done Right, there's always a point where just get the guy out of the building. That's when teams make trades. Just get him out of the bill. We're better off minus him than we are plus him. And I think that's where they were with Buffalo. And now they've got young receivers. They're going to ask. They're going to block. They can run the football. It's no To me, it's more of a media story than it is an internal Buffalo story. And Bean just automatically should just say, look, it's run its course. We needed to move on. Critical season for him, Sean McDermott, everybody in that organization. Win total set at 10.5 for Buffalo. Former Ravens linebacker Patrick Queen said this week he turned down more money to go elsewhere to play for the Steelers, citing a belief the Steelers are a place he can win. Here's Queen. It was just like five teams in a mix. Some of them was offering some seven teams, and then it was just like after that, it was just like, do I have a chance to either go win or I have a chance to get paid? And, you know, for me, the difference was like four or five million. I'm looking at it as like, I never been, I never been on a losing team before, and then I also don't want to be a part of like anything being rebuilt. So I'm really just trying to win right now, get that out of the way, and just get paid later. Thoughts? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, well, I mean, everybody says they take less money. I, I don't always know if that's true. And, you know, what team was offering him that? Was it Carolina offering him this huge payday that he didn't want to go there? Because, look, one thing we do know about the NFL, this whole thing, I want to go somewhere we're going to win. 50% of the playoff teams don't return every single year. 
So what does, I mean, if he would have signed in Houston last year, he would have said, well, I didn't want to play for a winner. Houston ended up winning. Mm. So things change so rapidly in the NFL. I don't know how this rhetoric can still continue on. Maybe he didn't like the system. I would buy that. Okay, I didn't fit the system. Look, he went to the right team. That doesn't mean he took less money when you lay it all out. 